the Lord. Sunday, hallelujah. You know, Monday through Saturday, week days, week. But Sunday, the sunny day, the strong day, and the supernatural day. The day of resurrection, when everything that is dead, dormant, dull in your life will rise up. Everything within, everything around, power from on high upon your life. I'm going to grab you by the hand, drag you out of the valley, and I'm going to drag you to the mountain top. Everybody is Sunday. Amen. Blessings will never stop in your life. Father, we thank you for this hour. Lord, we thank you because you brought your people together over here at the Alpha location and then online everywhere. Every congregation, every country, every continent, you brought us together. I pray, Lord, the power of heaven will penetrate every light even now in Jesus' name. Sunny day, success day, supernatural day, strong day for everyone. And I pray, Lord, will never be the same again. In your presence, fullness of joy. For my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter there, fullness of joy in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Now, today, the Lord wants to speak to us on one word. Now, you remember, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, as Jesus answered and said, Man shall not live by every, by the bread on earth, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word, just one word. There are times the Lord will speak to us about one word. That one word, Jesus. I want to know more about Jesus, one word. Other times, he wants to speak to us about the mansion. One word. I want to know more about the mansion on high. Sometimes it's one word, it's heaven. He wants to speak about one word, heaven. Sometimes it is about one word, salvation. He wants to speak about salvation. But this morning, he wants to speak about one word, the word, amen. Many times when we pray, we say in Jesus' name, and then we answer Amen. What does that mean? How do we know the benefit, the blessing, the power in that one word? Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 13. The latter part there, it says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. What's the final word there? Amen. First Kings chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 36. In First Kings chapter 1, verse 36, and Benaiah the son of Je Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen. The Lord God of my Lord, the king, says so too. You look at that amen, and it says, when you say amen, it says the Lord God of my Lord, the king, says so too. When you say amen on earth, then heaven says amen, and when the amen on earth, and the amen in heaven, when they come together, that's an explosive miracle in your life. Yeah. Ah, look at that. Amen. Yeah. 
<laughs> in second corinthians chapter one reading from verse 20 it says for all the promises of god in him are yea and in him amen compare those two words all the promises of god in him are yea that means yes and amen amen and yes they're together when you pray and you say in jesus name i pray heaven says yea yes and that yes the yes of heaven the affirmation of heaven the assurance of heaven the yes means amen unto the glory of god by us today i'm talking to you on the subject amen now henceforth and forever amen now amen henceforth amen forever somebody shout amen there yeah. there are three things we're looking at number one amen affirmation of the promises by our advocate amen means affirmation all the promises that god has given affirmation of the promises by our advocate number two amen assurance of performance by the almighty the amen means it is done and when you hear a final amen that amen finalizes your miracle heaven says yes we say yes earth and heaven combine together and we say yes affirmation of performance assurance of performance by the almighty number three amen agreement of the petitioner with his mighty arm the arm that pulls the universe the arm that shakes everything shakeable the arm that heals the arm that empowers when you say amen there is an agreement of the petitioner with his mighty arm amen in your life amen, amen in your family amen. amen to the promises of god in your life today in jesus name come to number one number one amen affirmation of the promises by our advocate amen the affirmation that jesus said that's right i died for your salvation you're asking for your for salvation i say amen that's right you're asking for healing by my stripes you are healed and i shout all over heaven amen for that promise you say amen yes you are quoting my word this sign shall follow them that believe and jesus our advocate says amen yes it is done you get it today i said you get it today look at this there are three things here number one the authority and position of our advocate christ is the advocate and we have the authority and the position of our advocate number two the affirmation of the promises by our advocate number three our access to all the promises through the advocate that's what it means when we say amen when christ says amen when the advocate says amen when the power the greatest power in the universe when that power says amen every problem is solved in your life look at number one the authority and position of our advocate in first john chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 1 my little children these things right i unto you that ye sin not and if any man sin 
we have an advocate. We have an advocate. We have, tell me, tell me, an advocate. You know, sometimes if you travel to another stage in your country and something happens, you need an advocate. You don't even have any defender there. Anybody, any supporter there. Sometimes you travel to another country and you say you're a stranger in that country. If you get into problem with the law enforcement agents, you don't even have any defender, any supporter there. But as a Christian, as a believer, we have an advocate in heaven. I have an advocate in heaven. And when Satan tries to whisper and he says, it's not qualified to have such a miracle. It's not qualified to have such big gift of grace coming from heaven. I have an advocate in heaven. And the advocate says, Satan, shut up. On behalf of my son there, Satan, shut up. On behalf of my daughter there, Satan, shut up. I come to my son, my daughter, online, and on behalf of that, my daughter, son, online, everybody tell me, Satan, shut up. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Maybe Satan will say, you are not righteous enough, you are not pure enough, you are not perfect enough, you are not qualified enough. But you have an advocate, and it's Jesus, the righteous one. And it's there for you every time. And whatever you ask, whatever he asks on your behalf, it will be done. Look at Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. It says that... He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Delivered him up for us all. Your name is there. Your picture is there. You are not an outsider for us all, for us all, for us all. Thank God you are there. And the advocate is for you. Christ the Lord is for you. It says... But delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely, freely, freely give us? Tell me. Tell me what you have in the advocate. All things. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, who is, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ, our advocate, that died. Yea, yes, rather is that his reason again who is even at the right hand of god who maketh intercession for us advocate he maketh intercession for us when your prayer appears weak he will join his intercession his prayer on your behalf and when doesn't matter which your prayer is when his own intercession is joined with your importunity answer will come Amen. your answer has come Amen. because of the authority and the position and the power of our advocate. Look at number two there. Number two there. We're looking at the affirmation of the promises by our advocate. The affirmation of the promises by our advocate in Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For all the promises of God, think about that. Think about that. All the promises of God for salvation, for healing, for deliverance, for sanctification, for Holy Ghost baptism, for the gifts of the Spirit, for provision, for protection, for preservation, and for keeping you from all evil until you get to heaven. All the promises of God 
in him a yea and amen there is no name there is no negativism there is no denial once i come i come before the throne of his grace and i say i come in the name of the advocate the one that died for me and the one that gave his life and gave his all for me finished all your problems are over all those things the pressure and the plague upon your life everything over suddenly the strength of an ego that will make you climb and get to the mountain top it will come today it will come you will rise up out of that place and all of a sudden there is affirmation all of a sudden there is assurance all of a sudden the power you never had for the next activity of progress that power will come because all the promises of god in him are yes and in him amen unto the glory of god your your life will spell glory in this world in your community my sister there don't say hey, pastor i have this challenge i have that challenge in the name of jesus all that challenge already resolved my brother they don't say you know pastor my family and this predicament and this problem and they said i don't know who they are but they said i will never get to where i am going to they said that too late your advocate already has said you will get there christ has said already you will get there wash up blot out every doubt from your mind because your life will bring glory to god unto the glory of god by us now he's given us all things and in fact his nature his name is amen look at this revelation chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 14. revelation chapter 3 verse 14 unto the angel of the church of the laodiceans right these things says the amen that's his name that's his nature he never contradicts himself did he say he will save you his name is amen did he say he will satisfy you his name is amen did he say he will fulfill all the promises he has given you until you see his face in glory his name is amen he will never contradict his promise his power the power the promise the, pro the prophecy the proclamation they all work together to lift you up until you get to your destination i am getting there i am getting there why are you so sure because the name the nature of my advocate is amen now we're coming to number three here number three here says our access to all promises through the advocate our access sometimes you want to enter the power room so that you can switch on and there will be light in the whole compound. You want to enter the power room so that you can switch on with the key. And then there will be power to serve all the gadgets you have on ground. But then you don't have the key. And if you don't have the key, you don't have access. But you know, we want to enter the power room the power room of the almighty god and there we want to switch on so that the light 
will come all over the field and the light will come to you there and the power will get to you there and the healing will get to you there and the new strength of the almighty will get to you there and the key is always there for us we don't say i missed it where is it in my pocket where is it because the key is our advocate are you there I said the key is, tell me, tell me. It says in, a, look at the word of God. It tells us there, and it says in chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 18. It says, for through him, through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. There is no time the door to the Father, the Father of all creation, the Father of all power, and the Father of all possibilities. There is no time the door is locked. You know why? Because through Him, the Advocate, we have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Look at verse 19 there. In verse 19, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers that the Lord, the gate against strangers. They look at the time and they say, we don't want any stranger to cross the gate and come to this place beyond this time. But you are not a stranger. You are the son of the living God. The daughter of the living God. And the gate is never closed to you. Yeah. Access to the Father. Access to his blessing. Access to his power. Always there. Because now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. But fellow citizens of the saints and of the household of God. God. I am part of his family. I am part of his household. Therefore, any time I knock at the door, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. In Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 39, it tells us, for the promise is unto you. I was waiting for an amen there. But the promise is unto you and to your children. Tell your children, tell your children anytime. Uh, whatever they can ask their earthly father. They can ask the heavenly father. And we're never at a loss because I am young. You are in the family, though you are young. Because, uh, you know, um, something happened. And that thing that happened, my mommy did not like that thing. <laughs> you know what? It's not everything you do your mommy will approve of. It's not everything you do that your daddy will approve of. But he'll never deny you a drink of water. I, I want to drink water. And, therefore, and then mommy said, water. Which water? Which kind of water? Never. You, you might be denied of luxury. You might be denied of conveniences. But the necessities of life. There's nothing you do that the Lord will deny you of air to breathe. Though you have done that thing and God is saying, Now my son, how could you go that direction? How could you go that way? He'll never deny you of air to breathe, of water to drink, of breakfast to take, of the children's bread, of your healing. Why? Because the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. To this, uh, this morning, I am assuring you the promise is unto you. Salvation, the promise is unto you. Righteousness, the promise is unto you. Healing, the promise is unto you. Deliverance, the promise is unto you. Supernatural deliverance, the promise is unto you. And everything that will make your life happy, exalted, the promise is unto you. Even to those that are far off online, anywhere you are, you're a little bit far from the, on from the alpha location here all the same i want to assure you because of our advocate 
who abides ever faithful that promise will come to you right now and you say to as many as will call on the lord our god let's come to point number two point number two is amen assurance of performance by the almighty when we say amen that means it's settled i was crying before i cannot cry now anymore and i was praying and crying and then eli said eli thought the woman was strong because of the fervency in prayer because of the importunity in prayer because of the sorrow in prayer and said take away your drunkenness and anna said no my lord i'm not drunk out of the body of my heart have i spoken and then yes yes in your life somebody help me shout yes amen say your own amen and when eli said be unto you as you have desired and then she was no more sad she was no more sorrowful all the tears were wiped away when you hear amen the final amen that means tears are wiped away that means your sorrow is gone that means your doubting is gone because there is assurance of performance by the almighty look at first kings again chapter one reading from verse 36 here is amen and benaiah the son of jehoiada answered the king and said amen that's final your problem that's final your predicament that's final and all your aspirations that is final somebody else was trying to take the place of solomon adonijah got everything settled and he went this way and got some people after him and they say long live the king and solomon was there and the promise was unto solomon nobody will steal your promise and so benah came unto david and said didn't you say that solomon will reign on your throne and he said yes <laughs> whatever adonijah had planned however far he has run whatever kind of people army he got together that yes from david cancelled all their power whatever conspiracy is against your life whoever wants to take your position whoever wants to take your privilege whoever wants to drive you away from your matrimonial home and they have worked out everything and signed everything this morning when we say yes to your home all those people will be scattered whoever wants to take your position your privilege and then they formalize everything they sign everything and they have said this one we're getting that man out of that place we're getting that woman out of that place this morning once we say amen on earth and heaven says amen we believers will say amen and the bridegroom the branch righteousness also says amen all those conspirators they will be scattered today <laughs> look at this again and benaiah the son of jehoiada answered the king and said amen the lord god of my lord the king say amen to you and when amen on earth comes in line with amen in heaven there's no way satan can take away your blessing i'm looking at three things here look at this number one the integrity of god in amen when god says amen his integrity 
will make sure it is done. Number two, the immutability of God, the Almighty, unchangeable, unchanging. Number three, the impeccability of God, that is our assurance. Look at number one, the integrity of God in Amen. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 11. It says, So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it, the word of God, the word of power, the word of prophecy, the word of promise, the word of performance will prosper in your life. And look at this in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. It says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. You will see well today. You will see your inheritance well today. You will see the provision of God well today in your life. For I will hasten my word to perform it. That's the final. Amen. And when God says, I will work and who will let it. He says, Amen in your life. And what do you have to be worried about? Bring your body to the Lord and leave it there. Bring your body to the Lord, your problem to the Lord, your aspirations to the, to the Lord, your ambition to the Lord, and leave it there because heaven assures you there will be a performance in your life. It's integrity that this is what he had said and it will be done. Look at Ezekiel chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 25. For I am the Lord. I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. And no more delay or prolonged in your days. It says... O rebellious house, I will say the word and I will perform it, says the Lord God. The Lord has said the word. You have come in favor to the kingdom at such a time as this. I want to assure you, because of the integrity of the Almighty God in Amen, there will be a performance in your life. Look at number two there. Number two is the immutability of God, the Almighty. Immutability. It cannot change. You know, weathers do not change God. Our country's economy does not change God. The bragging and the boasting of enemies puny people, poor people, human beings, the bragging of our enemies cannot change God. And Satan walking to and fro and going here and there does not change God. He is immutable. And because he is immutable, when we say amen, that is the immutability of God, the Almighty. In Hebrews chapter 6, and I'm reading here from verse 17. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath. Look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, that by two immutable things, in the which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Hope that is set before us. Let me tell you today, you will never come to any situation that, you know, God will say, that's hopeless. You'll never be hopeless in your life. 
because you are calm and you have confirmation and you have consolation and you have comfort from the Lord and no matter the condition in your body now my brother there my sister there no matter the economic situation in your life now your life your situation will never be hopeless in Jesus' name. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Numbers chapter 23, reading from verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Every promise he has given you, it will make good in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 89, reading from verse 34. 89, verse 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the sin, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Look at verse 35. Was a vice one by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. It's not his nature, he cannot lie, he will not lie to you. Everything he has promised he will do in your life, he cannot lie, he will do it. Salvation, he will do it. Healing, it will do it. Even if the sickness has dragged you to the brink. Of the grave from that place you'll come out alive yeah. we look at number three here number three there the impeccability of God our assurance impeccability of God our assurance James chapter 1 verse 17 every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. He is dependable, he is trustworthy, because he is a faithful God. He will be faithful to you. I said he's faithful to you. And this morning, now understand, God doesn't wait until evening to fulfill his promise. Can he fulfill his promise in the afternoon? When the sun is shining? When you're in the open? Can he work miracle? Of course, of course. He doesn't know day or night. He doesn't know sunshine or moonlight because he is faithful every time. He abides faithful every good gift coming your way and every perfect gift coming your way is from above and cometh down cometh down from the father of lights with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning he doesn't say i changed my mind uh -uh. he doesn't change his mind he said i will say whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved and god will never change his mind when you claim any promise of god in jesus name matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 35 matthew chapter 24 verse 35 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away my promise shall not pass away my power shall not pass away my performance shall never pass away you have it today i have it today we have it in jesus name we're coming to point number three now point number three we're looking at amen agreement of the petitioner with the mighty arm the agreement we have with the the petitioner we are the people making petition and making prayer with the almighty arm it will be done look at psalm 89 we're reading at verse 13 psalm 89 verse 13 thou hast a mighty arm thou hast a mighty arm strong is thy hand 
and high is thy right hand now when you want to carry a load it depends on how strong your arm is if it's moderate maybe you can carry it but then if it's weightier heavy iron your arm cannot carry again but god having a strong arm having a mighty arm it doesn't matter how heavy that load of your life is the almighty will carry that load your life it will carry you you know sometimes when somebody is sick very sick like the man in mark chapter 2 only one man could not carry him two men could not carry him three men could not carry him they had to put him on a stretcher and it took the strength of four men to carry that man but that's man the arm of the lord is stronger than the arm of 400 men the arm of 4,000 men. The arm of the Lord is stronger than the arm of uh, 10 doctors, 100 doctors, 1,000 doctors. And what they cannot carry, the Lord will carry you. I'm here today and you are there today and every burden you have that looks unbearable, every situation you have that looks unbearable, the Lord has come to help you out. And his arm is strong and mighty. He will not fail in your life. Amen. Agreement of the petitioner with his mighty arm. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our agreement with pronouncement of the gracious of our gracious God. Number two, the acknowledgement of the power of our great God. Number three, the accord of praise to our glorious God. Look at number one there. Number one is our agreement with the pronouncement of our gracious God. When God says something and you say Amen. Now, what he said may not be reasonable to you. You know why? God doesn't speak to your reasoning. Because that will blow your mind. He is so high. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Says the almighty God. As the heaven is higher than the earth. So are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And so he doesn't speak to your reason. When he said he was walking on the water. And Peter said if that is you. Bid me come on the water. Now he wasn't speaking to reason. If the reason would look at it yourself say i'm a fisherman and i know it literally about when you just jump into the river like that you will sink he was not speaking to his reasoning he was speaking to his faith that's the reason why you know even though it may look unreasonable you know you have agreement with the pronouncement of a gracious god his word will be fulfilled in your life this word will be fulfilled in my life. Words of joy, words of happiness, words of elevation, words of exaltation, words of lifting up. That word will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. You know, sometimes you send a messenger to go and get something, and then he returns. You say, what is the thing I sent you for? Oh, he said, I couldn't get the thing. It's impossible. They closed the market. The thing is too costly. The money I have in my hand is not sufficient. You send that messenger, that message, and then it comes back for it. God says, when I send my word to heal you, to lift you up, to deliver you, and to set you free, that word, that messenger, will never come back void. 
it will accomplish that which I please, it shall prosper in the thing whereon I sent it. Amen in your life. Look at Second Samuel chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 25. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 25. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning me, thy servant, and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as thou hast said. That's all. Do as thou hast said. I come, and you said, No servant comes to me, I will in no wise deny or push away. I come, do as thou hast said. You said, By your stripes I am healed. I come on that ground, do as thou hast said. You said, Holy Father, protect them, preserve them from all evil. And Lord, I come, like you said, do as thou hast said. You said, I give you my name, and whatsoever you will ask in that name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in me. That's why I came, do as thou hast said. This afternoon, it says, the promises unto you and then you come to claim the promise of god all you are telling god today is do as thou hast said that's your amen you will do it look at number two here number two here the acknowledgement of the power of our great god the acknowledgement of the power of our great God. Look at First Timothy chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 16 there. It says, Who only has immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach, can approach unto, whom no man has ever seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. And everybody said, amen. amen. He will do it. The amen is an acknowledgement. After the whole sentence there, then it says, amen. Amen. That means the power, the prophecy, the pronouncement, everything is done. And then the people of God said, Amen. Look at Jude chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 24. Jude chapter 1. We're looking at verse 24 now. Unto him that is able to keep you. He will keep you. You've come to this global crusade. You've heard the word. You've seen the manifestation. And you are going back home with the word amen and the lord will keep everything he has provided for you unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy verse 25 unto him the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty, dominion, and power, but now and ever. Yeah. Amen. It is done. Yeah. His power cannot fail. Jeremiah chapter 32. And we're reading from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 32. We're looking at verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold that was made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee there is nothing too hard for thee tonight today there is acknowledgement of his power in your life look at number three here number three the accord the accord of praise 
to our glorious God. A coach of praise to our glorious God. In Psalm 41, reading from verse 13, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. Everybody read that. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Shout it out. Psalm 72, I'm reading from verse 17. It says, His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun. And the men and men shall be blessed in him. And men shall be blessed in him. And everyone here, everyone there shall be blessed in him. And all nations shall call, shall call him blessed. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. He never does any bad thing. Who only does wondrous things, wonderful things. And the wonderful grace and gift and goodness of God will be lavished upon your life today because he only does wondrous things and then in verse 19 in verse 19 and blessed be his glorious name forever and let the whole earth be filled with his glory amen and amen in your life amen in your family, amen. A confirmation, a performance in your life, in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 89, verse 52. Psalm 89, verse 52. Blessed be the Lord forevermore. And everybody shout, amen and amen. Psalm 106. I'm reading from verse 48. In Psalm 106, verse 48, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, And let all the people say, Let all the believers say, Let all the people that receive the manifestation today say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. We're looking at Matthew chapter 6 and we're looking at verse 13. Matthew chapter 6 verse 13 from the middle there. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. Forever. As we stand up now. And as we remember that all the promises of God are yes and amen for every one of us. And as we pray, everything you ask in prayer, according to the promises, your advocate Christ will say amen. The mighty arm of the Lord will say amen. And then also we the petitioners will be in agreement with the almighty God. Amen in your life. Amen. Your blind eyes open. Amen in your life. Amen. Your lame and weak leg become strong. Amen in your life. And your tears be wiped away. Amen in your life. And your prayers be answered today. And the people of God say, Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.